everyone. Welcome to another episode of Thai Conversations with Aida Padikonate. If you're new to the channel, Thai simply means technology, innovation, and entrepreneurship. And in these discussions, we'll be highlighting inspiring African stories of technology leaders and innovative entrepreneurs. Today, I have with me an inspiring young lady who calls herself the Shoemaker Girl. And we are going to hear about her inspirations and aspirations for the future. Thank you so much, Edna, for joining me today on the episode of Thai Conversations. Thank you so much, Aida, for uh, having me. I'm grateful and honored to be here. Okay, so without wasting much time, uh, we can go right into it. So tell us about yourself. Thank you. So um, Edna Frimpon, um, basically the shoemaker girl. I, I just completed my university. So I'm the first degree in public relations. And yeah, I'm fully into the profession, the shoemaking work for now. Nice. So what inspired you as a young lady to go into the shoemaking business? Someone who has a degree, you know, it's a very interesting story. And um, I just want to hear about it. What really inspired this action and this decision? Okay, so first of all, my dad is a shoemaker, professional shoemaker, and I grew up with him. So definitely, I you get to learn from doing living with your parents or doing something and you're close to it and I used to work with him when I was young help him send me on errands and all that so I got to know the all the ins and out of the business it's okay and I remember when when, when I was in junior high school primary school I used to sell in school anything I found my hands to I need to sell so you decided to go on the entrepreneurial journey and to take up daddy's business, daddy's girl. <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> yeah. So um, how has the journey been so far? Have you had any challenges? Have you had any discriminatory remarks? You know, all these things. So it's been the opposite for you. Tell us about your journey as a female shoemaker. So personally, I haven't really seen or Facebook much about gender. I really people just rather get close, they want to buy. Yeah, they are fascinated by what I do. But I'm I'm I was I'm I haven't really gotten that bad side yet. Maybe I don't know what will come, but I know some people do get it. Yeah. But the challenges are well apart from people looking down on you based on your gender, which I don't really get that often. Is the fact that uh, the system we live in sometimes make it difficult for even you to become an entrepreneur or do your own thing. Today, you go to the markets, there's an increment of product. Materials have been increased. Are you going to price your product every minute, every second, every year? No. So you need to adjust. But then, so if policies are not working in favor of you, the entrepreneur, you, the business person, it's 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 just happening. Every day, policies and policies in and policies out comes and it is not really in favor of us. You know, we are in this country, and so we know what's happening here. So yeah, but it's 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 all good. You can't stop. You just have to balance. You just have to plan and know what to do so that you don't get boxed. Mm-hmm. It's 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 quite a challenge, you know, for most entrepreneurs because of the current economic situation. But that is why I'm even doing this, you know, conversation so that I can highlight your stories and bring in more market and more opportunities to, you know, what you're doing. So tell me more about your products, right? What kind of products do you make? What's the range of products? Is there someone interested in getting some of your stuff? You know, let them know that this is what you do. Sure. So thank you. So uh, at a half a day. We don't just produce the shoes. So it's not only shoes that we have. Even the shoes we have, normal shoes, I mean, the Oswald, the Bruge, the Monstra, but whatever. We also do have slippers. We do have sandals, ladies for every gender and boots. And we don't just have only footwear. We have smocks, you know, the Northern smocks. We do, we've introduced the modern smocks. We have people who do that. We went to the Northern part of the country last year to 
get some of the smokes and talk to the people how they made it. So we also have smokes. So if you go to our website, you get to see footwears, you get to see smoke done by people in Ghana, you get to see bags, crochet, everything made with the hand by a Ghanaian person who find it on the platform. The it's shoes, really the inspiring, you know, knowing so that because it's wide range. Yeah, we are trying to promote them. I mean, the yeah, government is doing work. Promote me. So we are also in, in, in helping the government achieve that agenda. We also do our part to project more of the media in Ghana. Mm, thank you so much. So if you want any handmade products, bags, shoes, boots, um, the the northern cloth, everything. Mox. Mox, Mox, <laughs> yeah, that's the name smokes everything all that range if you want this as a gift to your friends just contact Amvadi. so you mentioned i like the fact that you mentioned that you have a website and it's really good for international trade so what's the link to your website in case there's someone who wants to go there to so, buy some products okay so the website is ahofade.com so ahofade a-h-o-f-a-d-e dot com ahofade.com so just when you click on that you you see the website. It's so easy to serve. It's it's mostly on it's, it's a Shopify account, so it's really easy to serve on that platform. You don't get lost. That's good to know. You know, ease of you know buying and navigating on websites yeah. is very important, especially for elderly people and people who are not too exactly. used to you know buying online. So I'll yeah. I'd like to ask. So, what are your future aspirations as a, an entrepreneur in the shoemaking business? Um, what should we expect from you in the next five, ten years? You know, when I invite you up to my show, what should we expect to see? So five years to come. Um, I don't, I don't want to use the present. I want to, I don't want to use the future things. I want to use the say in the present form, like a fake. <laughs> so, a um, few years to come, we will be exporting to various countries: US, Canada, and UK. Few years to come, we will establish um a, a shoe academy in Ghana. Few years to come, we'll be empowering more young people, young artisans who want to learn shoemaking and other skills job. Wow. So you're planning on having a shoemaking academy, you're empowering more artisans. So when you say you're empowering more artisans, like what's the target number? What are you looking at? You know, and I'm really looking forward to that academy. And I'm looking forward to having you having more than 50% being women who are hammering and you know, cutting and sewing and stitching and making shoes, you know, and promote sure. a made in Ghana product. So how many people are you targeting? So um we, we already did some, but it was just three or four people who we focused on. Mm. Yeah, but now we have more of the shoemakers, we have more of the artisans who are open for to receive students to come and learn for free. You just have to come. So yeah. Oh wow, um, free work, training. Yeah. Oh, we yes, work on you can that. Hear that. So they have free training. So if you're interested, you are jobless or you want to start a business in shoemaking, this is for you. From listening. Yeah. Some people so I don't want to learn the shoemaking and it's not fine. There are different aspects of the shoemaking. You don't have to make necessarily we have to make it. You all can sell it. So like when I started with my dad and I and I and I wasn't good, I used to sell. He did this is for me and I'll go and sell it. So yeah, if you if you don't have the time to be making it, you can sell it. So that's the whole sell agenda where people okay, just give me in box, let me go and sell it. You also become part of the the, the supply chain of the shoemaking industry. Nice. Okay, so tell us about your wins, right? Um, I know this journey has been fruitful. You mentioned that people admire you. You're an inspiration to many. So tell us about some of your wins and the things you are most proud of on this journey. Mm, okay, one of them is um, being on, finding myself on the LinkedIn platform. You know, it's one professional. People claim it to be professional platform that you can grow your audience and also build your self well. And I... I mean, it's a professional platform. People, say. you find yourself on that platform, and you see corporate work people, and you just went the boom with the shoemaking. Yeah, people. I at, at first I thought people wouldn't accept it, but now I see how people have accepted 
me and I have been able to build a community around it and all my massive wins, my biggest gigs, my the opportunity to have with you like this and all everything, every opportunity I try to apply on, I got it from LinkedIn. So I can take LinkedIn out of my life. It was the defining moment. Everything I have, everything I'm working towards, the people I met, helping me push me to the where I want to go is through LinkedIn. And last year we were I was we were able to exhibit at the British Council. I was giving um a play to uh, uh summarize my achievement as one of the youngest female shoemakers and entrepreneurs in Ghana. Yeah. Wow. And I've been I've been I've been featured in our in blogs, in blog, thank you, um newspapers and other social media people's blogs. So yeah, I think it's also quite interesting. Oh, congratulations. And actually I follow you on LinkedIn and that's how I saw, you know, the work you're doing. I follow your conversations and you know the momentum you are trying to drive on the platform. We are doing amazing. So to my final question, um what words of advice do you have for uh, an entrepreneur, a female entrepreneur in an uncommon field just like yours? Who is probably maybe giving up or you know needs some push or encouragement or motivation? What are your words to that person who might be working us today? Yeah, so first of all, you need to love what you are doing. If you don't love what you are doing, definitely you're gonna give up. You will give up. So you need to first of all love what you're doing. And I, I learned this thing from one of my role models. I mean, there are two things to succeed in this world. They say one is to be like Abraham or two to be like Lot. So you see, if you go to the Bible, God called Abraham. God did not call Lot. But you, when you read the Bible, you would think, say, even God even called Lot because Lot even enjoyed most of the blessings, enjoyed most of um, the blessings even more than Abraham. So people even thought God called Lot. But God called Abraham. So sometimes you may have the skill, you may have the um, the idea, but you don't have the funding, you don't have the other skills. That's where you can collaborate, connect with someone who is in the same vision with you. But the Bible says, well, can two people work together unless they agree? It happens in every circumstance. So whatever, whoever you're working with, if you don't have the same vision or the same idea, you can work together. So yes, if you are Abraham and you have the idea, God has given you the mandate to do something. Why not? You go, you help. But if you're not Abraham, it's not able to be a pioneer of something. You, some people have to support. That's why you have despite media. People work for him. And then even those who are working there, they are millionaires and millionaires. So you, you, if you can't pioneer something, make sure you support, like be a lot. And that's where your blessings will come from. You might have the means, look for someone who has the idea and collaborate with the person. Sometimes you can't go alone. So if you check that Europeans, they do well with collaborations. They do well with partnership. Because the journey can be very difficult. And you cannot go all alone. You need people to push you. Thank you so much, Edna. That's really inspiring. You need people, you need to collaborate, and you need enablers. So thank you for joining me today. It's been a pleasure listening to you. And to my audience, um, this has been Thai Conversations with Aida Fatiko Nate. See you on our next episode. And don't forget to like this video, share it, and subscribe to my channel. See you. Bye. Love you. Bye.